I uh, tell people all the time, like, yes, I'm an engineering, but I don't want to be an engineer. And they're really confused, rightfully so. They're like, why the heck are you studying engineering then? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Paris, and in today's video, I am going to be going over the reasons why I picked engineering way back in grade 12. And I'm not going to lie, this video is kind of for myself as well, just because lately I've been a little bit discouraged about the courses that I'm having to take. Um, I was listening to a podcast about climate change, and I just feel like the climate emergency is so urgent, and I feel like my courses are not equipping me to help with the climate crisis, but ultimately I do know engineering is a good, solid base degree to have, and I know that I'll be able to take the skills that I learn in my undergrad and apply them in a climate change context afterwards. So that's partially why I'm filming the video. And then of course, if the video helps out anyone with their applications, then that's even better. My engineering journey kind of begins in grade seven slash eight, where I attended this event called Go Eng Girl. Go Eng Girl was kind of this two day conference where you attended different workshops, where you built like a little car, uh, something battery powered, just a bunch of little engineering projects. And you also heard a lot of guest speakers. So Go Eng Girl is really where I was first exposed to engineering just because I don't actually have family members who I can like talk to easily who are in engineering. I really have Go Eng Girl to thank for kind of planting the seed in my head that I could even consider engineering as a possible career option. So in grade 9, um, I distinctly remember writing to my science teacher, we had to write these like letters about what we wanted to do in the future, and I remember writing like, I want to be an engineer because I like math, and I like physics, and I like all types of science. That was kind of like the reason back then why I wanted to do engineering, and I just thought hands-on stuff was cool to be honest, based off of my experience at Go Eng Girl. And then grade 10 rolls along, and I'm still like, yes, I want to do engineering, um, I kind of was narrowing down to either civil or chemical just because I, the number one thing I'm passionate about is the environment and I knew that both of those fields kind of encompassed uh, sustainability. So grade 11 rolls along and I would say grade 11 is the first like roadblock I hit in engineering. It was the first time I really was like, hmm, maybe engineering is not for me. For the simple reason of me completely bombing my first physics test. That first test, I got like a 63 or something. I know right now saying it, it sounds kind of silly, but at the time I was devastated. I just remember thinking, if I can't even do well in physics, how in the world am I gonna study engineering? Because engineering is all about physics, right? And so I was really discouraged in grade 11. What I ended up doing was I dropped the course and I retook it second semester because that's the thing you could do in high school. Um, if you dropped it early enough, it wouldn't show up on your transcript. And the second time around taking the course, I went into it with kind of like a different mindset. I knew that I would struggle with physics. I knew that I found it hard. And I knew that I could not approach it the same way I was doing all my other courses. And so I made sure to change my study habits. And after changing the way I studied for physics, I actually ended up doing like decently well in that course. Not as good as like my other courses, but I improved my grades. And so I got over that and I was like, okay, physics is hard. Um, but I really like it. And that leads me to the first reason why I chose to study engineering is simply put, just because I love physics. I remember in grade 12 looking at the environmental science curriculum and the engineering curriculum just because environmental science and like sustainability programs, that was like the other area of like programs I was applying to. But I remember looking at the environmental science and the engineering curriculum and seeing that there was virtually no physics in the environmental science program and sitting there being like, I cannot imagine the next four years of my life without physics. I know that was a very, very nerdy statement, but it's true. I, I just really, really do love physics and I think it's so cool learning about just like how our world works. Like I, I see it in my everyday and like now when I drive around a road, I can feel the centripetal force and it's like kind of cool, you know, learning about that in class and then seeing it and experiencing it in real life. Um, so that's, that's the first reason. The second reason why I picked engineering um, and again, this reason is not necessarily 100% true, but it's what I heard at the time. And it's still kind of what I hear today, but um, I had heard from a lot of engineers, like people working in the field that I was talking to, 
um, and they all said that if you have the grades for engineering you may as well go into it first and if you don't like it you can always switch out of it because it's easier to switch out of engineering than into it. Again, I don't know if that's 100% true so please take that with a grain of salt but that is the overwhelmingly unanimous large piece of advice I had heard in grade 12. The third reason why I picked engineering was because I wanted a challenge. Um, I think I'm someone who I just really really like to challenge myself and when I'm given like a really easy task and I finish it with a lot of time to spare I'm kind of just sitting there like twiddling my thumbs being like I feel like I could do something more productive than sitting here like I want something more challenging um, and that's just like that's just who I am and I knew that engineering was going to be a challenge because I found physics so difficult and I still find physics difficult to this day and so knowing that I was like I want to be able to study engineering, go through four or five years of a hard program, and finish it, get my iron ring, look back, and be like, I did that. I put in the hard work, and I understood physics, and I got my engineering degree. I, I wanted that challenge, and so that's why, one of the reasons why I picked engineering. And then, kind of like, another reason which is like not really a reason but like in Canada if you didn't know if you're watching this from another country if you get an iron ring um, you, it's like on your pinky finger when you graduate from a Canadian engineering program the ring comes from I believe a bridge that actually collapsed I think in Quebec um, and so it's just a reminder that engineers hold like a lot of weight in their profession and uh, public safety is really really important and um, as engineers you have that responsibility and that's kind of what the reminder is but like you know I kind of want that ring um, so not really a legit reason but I had to put that in there because I can't say that it's not somewhat of a motivation for me to finish my degree anyways on to the real reasons now the fourth reason why I picked engineering again this one I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent true and there's a lot of different factors that come into play but I had heard that the job prospects for engineering were much better than other degrees. I remember hearing like, oh, if you're gonna pick environmental science, like what are you gonna do after like research, work in a lab versus like engineering? I just heard that there were a lot more jobs available. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true, obviously. But another thing that I did hear was that as an engineer, um, because like people always, I was talking to, I told them I was interested in like environment, like sustainability, climate change stuff. And they told me like as a civil engineer, you can still apply to the environmental science slash sustainability jobs, but someone with an environmental science degree can't necessarily apply to a civil engineering job. I don't know if that's 100% true, but I actually, from personal experience, do kind of agree with that. Uh, my co-op last summer, uh, the job description actually listed like environmental science was one of the degrees they were looking for. They didn't necessarily say civil engineering. It was um, the environment section for a municipality and pretty much everyone on the team studied environmental science. But I was still able to apply for that job and I still got it as an engineering student. So from personal experience, I would say like that's kind of true. Obviously, I know that if I was applying to a very technical environmental science job, I would not be qualified either as a civil engineer. Um, but what I have noticed is that I'm still eligible for sustainability related positions as an engineering major. Obviously, job prospects really depends on like you as a person, what kind of extracurriculars you have, what kind of other work experience you have. Your degree does not define your job prospects 100%. So the final reason why I picked engineering, and this is probably the biggest reason why I picked it, was because I had heard at the time, and also just from doing my own research, that engineering is just a really good solid base degree to have regardless of what field you want to go into. And you can see examples of this in the real world. You see, yes, a lot of engineers working in like technical fields, like actually designing buildings and like working with AutoCAD and doing calculations, but you more often than not see engineers working not in engineering fields, like as project managers or anywhere in the business field or as like CEOs of companies. You see them everywhere. And I think a reason for this might be because engineering, I do think, um, and you know, having done three years of it, it really helps you develop a lot of really good skill sets that can be applied to any field. And one of the big ones is problem solving. I think there's something about like the program where we are just forced to go through a lot of different problems. And yes, they're technical problems with like physics and math involved, but there's just something about having to write out three pages of a solution, getting to your final answer, figuring out it's wrong, and then having to go back and find your mistake and 
that skill, I think, is something that is really important that can be applied to any field, regardless of whether it's engineering related or not. And for myself, I uh, tell people all the time, like, yes, I'm in engineering, but I don't want to be an engineer. And they're really confused, rightfully so. They're like, why the heck are you studying engineering then? And it's for this reason, because I know that I want to work in the climate change space. I want to help with the climate crisis. And I'm fairly confident that the skills I learned in my engineering degree will be applicable to the climate crisis and it's going to help bring a more unique lens to the issue rather than like me just studying environmental science uh, because most people working in that space do have some sort of like environmental science geology background and not saying that's not important I think we need people from every single discipline tackling the climate crisis together um, but I think that's like one of the reasons why I'm going to stick with engineering because I realize that we need different uh, different perspectives looking at the issue. Obviously there's a lot of unknowns for my future, like I want to do a master's degree and I'm looking at one program at the London School of Economics. I know it's like really dreaming big there, but it's called environmental economics and climate change. Economics is something I'm really interested in as well. Who knows if I'm going to get into that program with an engineering degree. Is my civil degree like good enough for that, for an econ master's? I don't know, I guess we'll find out, but for the time being Yes, I'm having to take some courses that I don't love to take, but I think you're going to have to do that with any degree. You're not going to love 100% of your courses. If you do, that's great, obviously, but for most people, I don't think they're going to like all their courses. So for the time being, I'm going to stick with my degree and take some sustainability courses on the side and just keep working hard at it, hoping that one day I will be able to use the skills I learned during this degree and apply them to help with the climate crisis. That's kind of it for this video. Hopefully it gave you some more insight into why, even though I'm passionate about sustainability, that's like my main thing, why I still chose to study civil engineering instead of a regular sustainability environmental science degree. And hopefully it helped a little bit with your university applications, maybe giving you a little bit more insight into engineering. And so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.